hello today I'm here with a new video and today I'm here with a tag video and this is the top five and bottom five I think it's called brands that excite me and brands that don't excite me and this is created by Samantha March I will leave her video and channel down in descriptions and I have seen a lot of people that I follow that do this so I want to do this as well and for me it was so hard to come up with my top five brands the bottom five was not that hard uh, but the problem I had it was like I didn't want to take like blush tribe or certify or anything like that because they are in the brands and small in the brands and like menagerie cosmetics because I, I want to support them so yeah it doesn't feel like I just didn't take them because then it felt like I could ramble like 15 brands like Strobe, Certify, Blush Tribe, Menagerie Cosmetics. So I didn't take any of these because it's... they're going to excite me 99% of the time. So I have taken some other brands and I think I will start with the bottom so we end this video in a positive way. So my top bottom brands that don't excite me at all and I'm going to talk about these brands and just a little disclaimer I know that Angelica Nyqvist did this disclaimer like just because the brands don't excite me doesn't mean that I hate them or don't want to buy from them it's just like when they're coming with something new I'm like oh maybe it's good maybe it's bad maybe I want it maybe I don't I don't really care so I'm going to start with my bottom five. First up is Tarte. I have never bought anything from Tarte. I don't get the hype around Tarte. When Tarte came to Sweden earlier this year, people were like crazy. And I was like, I couldn't care less. Because their big thing is their shape tape. I have concealers that I love and I don't think shape tape would be anything for me. Um. So I was like, I don't care if Tarte comes to Sweden or not, and their palettes look like the same palette with different packaging. Maybe you think Tarte is a super wonderful brand, but I'm like, no. The other brand that also starts with a T is Too Faced, and I think I have... I like the Better Than Sex mascara, that feels like a super unpopular opinion. I like that mascara. I have their Better Together palette that they did with Kat Von D. I don't like the Too Faced side. No. I have tried some lipsticks. No. And that's everything I've tried from Too Faced. And I don't want to try anything else. And I haven't got one, like, they're coming out with a new collection and everybody's like, Oh, Tutti Frutti collection! I'm like, okay. I don't know, because Too Faced is, they have scented makeup. And scented makeup, it's not my thing at all. So I don't know if it's because of that I am not excited at all. But I don't just want to buy from Too Faced. And then they come out with these like childish collections and I'm like, it looks like a Polly Pocket. Next up we have Revolution. And I have some things that I love from Revolution. I love their concealer, Conceal and Define. And I also love the Hyaluronic spray. But I just think, I excuse my hair, I just think that Makeup Revolution or Revolution I don't even know what they are called. They are coming out with too much stuff. And also they... I don't think that everything must have a good packaging. But I think it helps. And it especially helps when you have a lot of releases. And yeah. I don't think it looks fun, something looks childish, and they are trying to release always. 
and that just wears me out and I'm I have never been interested to buy a makeup palette <laughs> an eyeshadow palette from Revolution then we have a brand that I I love but I think they have lost their spark and that is Urban Decay when I started with makeup I bought the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette it is a really good palette it's I think it's pretty boring now but it is a really good palette and I felt like for maybe four years ago Urban Decay they were edgy they were grungy they were fun and now they are not they can come out like this palette this is fun and this is different but then they come out with like just so boring palettes they discontinued the original naked palette and then they come with a naked reloaded and I'm like what and they come with a naked cherry and like it's like a darker version of naked free and they come with a naked heat and it's like you are too late to the party or what okay I don't get it where is the edgy and fun Urban Decay? And then they come out with this Game of Thrones collection. And I, I don't watch Game of Thrones. I couldn't care less about Game of Thrones. But then I saw the makeup and I was like... Even if you love Game of Thrones, do you think that this collection looks good? Is this a fun collection? Even if you like the series? I don't know. I don't think so. And then the last brand is The Balm. I have some palettes from The Balm that I love. The... Meat Matte Nude. Meat Matte Adore. Meat Matte Nude. Meat Matte Trimony. I like those palettes. These are really good palettes. But it feels like The Balm is doing the same thing over and over and over again. I love their name of things because they are really creative in getting fun names um, I had the Bon Appetit palette and I sold it because I didn't use it and some of the shades were like crispy bacon and so <laughs> mac and cheese and stuff like that so they are fun but they are not so creative with the actual makeup so that's a little bit sad. They are super good with base products but when it comes to eyeshadow palettes it's like the same thing over and over again and it's nothing fun it's nothing new it's like a cool funny package of the palette and then inside it's just like the same old palette so no I do not get excited with the ball. So if we go into the five brands that excite me and this was harder <laughs> that's strange um, but it was just because I didn't want to take small in brands I have some in the brands but not like this one woman show in the brands or uh, I have one so we can just start off with Linda Holberg as you know I love Linda Holberg I have almost everything they've ever released. I love their brand and now with the Spectral palette, that palette, it feels like it opened <laughs> to more people and I am always excited when they are releasing things because I want to support the brand. I love Linda, she's so cool and also the things are really good, have really high quality and I also like that they are all multifunctional, so you can use the shades everywhere. Next up we have Nabla, and I love Nabla. I have three palettes, four palettes? Three palettes. How many palettes do I have? Three. I have three palettes from Nabla, and they're matte collection, so maybe four palettes, but it's single shadows. And they are so good. I really love their formula on the shadows. The Poison Garden is maybe not 
as good as the other palettes, but I don't think it's so bad that people say, and they're really products. I don't even think I need to say anything, because I love their liquid lipsticks, and I love their base products as well. I haven't tried the foundation and concealer. I want to try the foundation, I think. I don't think the concealer will fit me, but like their highlighter and their blushes, I love them. And I think that Nabla is, they are both a little edgy and colorful, but they are also safe. But they have a good balance, I think, between safe and edgy. I love that and they are just a really good brand and most of the thing is vegan. And yeah, Nabla is definitely one of my brands that excite me most when they are releasing. Then we have... ABH, Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I didn't know if I wanted to take this in my top or in my bottom, and why, you may ask. I think that they are, with the Riviera palette, I didn't really understand what everybody saw in that, but I think it's so fun that a super big brand wants to try to do something that is not that mainstream. I love that with the Riviera palette, but I don't, it was nothing for me. And I also think they are coming out with good eyebrow products, good highlighters, and more fun like highlighting kits. I love that about them. They don't like have only this gold and this champagne and this rose highlighter. They have like a purple and a blue and a green and a super pink. And I like that, and I love that such a big brand is doing that, and not just indie brands. And also I really love their matte lipsticks. And they have so fun colors for being a normal brand. If <laughs> I hope you get what I mean. So ABH, I get excited, but it's not like I want to buy all the things. It was pretty long time since I go so since I bought something from ABH something new but I think they are one of the bigger brands that are trying to suit like bigger audience and not like do the same safe thing over and over again like Urban Decay so that's why they excite me but they not excite me as much as I want to buy everything and then we have Juve's Place, and I love Juve's Place. I have eight palettes from Juve's Place, and they are just so good. They are doing one of the best eyeshadow formulas I know, and they are expanding their brand. I love that. I really want to try some of their highlighters, and my hair, I don't really know. I don't want to take it behind my ear, but I don't want it in my face, and I don't want it so flat. This is hard. So, US Place excite me, and they do palettes that are really good. <laughs> where, was, where was I going with that? So, I often get excited when ABH, no, when US Place are we talking about uh, releasing something new. And then the last brand is a controversial brand, and that is Jeffree Star. And I don't buy that much from Jeffree Star. I have some lipsticks, but nothing more. I have no eyeshadow palettes and I don't want to buy any of the eyeshadow palettes. But why I took him in, took that brand in my top five, it feels like he is doing the things that in small indie brands do, but he has a super big brand. So he, I like that he has gone from a little indie brand and doing the same thing now that he did before. He's not have changed his love for color or to do an extreme packaging or something. It feels like some brands, the bigger they get, they change themselves to fit the bigger audience. But it doesn't feel like Jeffrey Star has done that and I love that. And also I think when he's doing something like the Blue Blood palette, other brands are like, yeah, we should maybe do a blue palette. And they follow him, so I am excited 
when he's releasing things because it feels like other brands will follow but I don't want to buy the Jeffree Star things but that other brands will follow, other big brands and yeah I hope you get what I meant with that it feels like I'm not the best explanator <laughs> it's not even called it God. it doesn't feel like I'm that good to explain things and to like get it out but I really hope you get what I mean. And that was five brands that does not excite me and that excites me. And if you want to do this tag, do it because it's so fun to hear what people think about different brands. And do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Please let me know down in the comments. And I really hope you like this video and if you're not subscribing to my channel, please do so you don't miss any of my videos. Bye!